But we're going to go down to Prosper, Texas now. This is going to be very entertaining. Manny Arsenault, he put it out there late last week. He said, hey, guys, I'm available to talk ball. And here he is Monday morning. How you doing, Manny? Man, I'm doing all right. Feeling good. good. Okay. Hey, if you didn't mind, I, I saw your tweet this morning. Were you out coaching kids this morning? Look looked like you were up and at it bright and early. What's your day been like today so far? Yeah, yeah. I had um, an adult class at 6 a.m. Then right at 8 a.m., I had a baseball player getting ready for this upcoming season, trying to help them make the varsity squad. So, yes, I'll be training kids at Russian Middle School. Good for you, man. I appreciate uh, you doing that. Glad to hear that. Before we talk about the CFL stuff, there's a story with you and the Frisco Fighters, and I understand you balled out the other night. You had three touchdowns? What, what, what's going on with the Frisco <laughs> Fighters in your most recent game? Yeah, man. It was well, Yeah, first play of the game, corner route for a touchdown, a choice route. Coach said he was going to dial it up. But, yeah, man, I just kind of embraced the indoor game. It's 10 minutes away, and it was something to add to the resume and um, to the rest of the accolades, you know, being able to play in the NFL, the great career I had in the CFL. And I was like, why not finish with indoor football? That way I can have that closure being that when 2020 hit, it was nothing. So for me, that's what it was, man, getting that closure, still being in the locker room, being able to mentor. But, yeah, it it was an exciting night the other night as we also just make a playoff run to have a top seed. So I'm just continuing to to have fun, run around, hitting folks, getting hit, you know, just staying young and active. Good for you. Well, I love it. Uh, By the way, we interrupt this interview, Darren, for a message from one of our sponsors, Roxanne from Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions writes in. She says, just wanted to send a quick hi from Darnell and I from beautiful Niagara Falls. So I appreciate our viewers checking in while on vacation. Your Wikipedia man, he says there's a story here about you joining the Frisco Fighters. Now, you're a 33-year-old rookie. I'm wondering how that's going. And apparently the the quarterback... (laughs) The quarterback, Jonathan Bain, had to convince you to sign with the fighters. So what's it like being a 33-year-old rookie, and how did you get talked into playing for this team? Man, yeah, so the facility that I was at, Built for does the strength and conditioning. So Jonathan, during the pandemic, I would catch for him because I was still doing one-on-ones against our NFL guys and the CFL guys like Money Hunter, Ahmad, and those guys that's in Montreal because they all live in the area. So one day they had a guy they brought in, and he was like, hey, you want to catch for me? So we must have done routes on there. And the coach was just like, hey, man, I think you still got some in the tank. Would you come out and play? But Bain was asking me for months to come out. And I was like, nah. Then I was like, you know what? Let me give it a try. You know, it doesn't conflict with my schedule. So I got out there. And like you say, being a 33-year-old rookie, new to this game, the learning is the angles. Because everything is condensed now. So... Regardless of all the catches I made, the yards and touchdowns, I'm having to learn a new style of football. At the end of the day, it's still football, but learning the indoor rules. So it's just crazy messing up on something simple. But it's like, you know what? I'm new to this and have to learn. So that's the biggest thing is how everything is condensed. And it's all about angles being in the indoor football league. Yeah, for sure. I feel like we could sit and talk about this all day. And when I fell in love with arena football, was watching it on ESPN, I think. Maybe TSN had it. But a guy's (laughs) going full out into the end zone and whack, folded over the boards. I'm like, this is awesome. So, yeah, things are happening very fast. And I'll ask one more arena league question, then we'll get to the CFL. And by the way, Manny uh, Manny was with the Vikings, Redskins, and Jets as well. His CFL career sandwiched around that. But Ryan in Saratoga, New York says, question for Manny. What's your experience been with arena football legends Clint Dolezal and Danny Rodabaugh as your coaches? Man, it's funny they asked that because Coach Dozell just sent the message in a group chat for the team. It just flashed on my screen. But nah, huh. you know what's crazy? He remind me so much of Wally Bono. Um, the coaches, man, they get their message across straightforward. But they also prepare you for life off the field. And that's the kind of guy that Coach Clint is. He's a winner. Worn everywhere he's been, and, and he's straight to it. He don't have time to play around, but his whole thing is a winning mindset. And that's what I like most about him. And I told him that the other day. I was like, man, you remind me of my old coach that I had up in Canada. How y'all delivery be early in the week, no rah-rah speeches. And I expect you to go out there and be a professional. And that's kind of how you rock and roll, be a pro. Lots of comments coming in, uh, Manny, from uh, the viewers here. Obviously a very popular CFLer, 
you were you sent out an a um, encouraging tweet to all CFLers on the day of the game on the on Thursday, I think it was, saying, "Let's go, guys, uh, CFL." What did you get a chance to watch any of the games in Week One? And if so, what was your Man. your take? What'd you think? Yeah, yes, I watched the BC and Saskatchewan game play by play, rewind it to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I kind of liked the other games. I just kind of caught clips of the highlights that was posted on social media or guys' personal page. But I really dove into the BC game and the Saskatchewan game, being that those was the two organizations that gave me an opportunity. And it's a couple guys that I still keep in touch with. But um, it was good to see. You know, with no preseason, these next three to four games, that's your preseason. So you'll start to see some great football about midway but just seeing what the guys put out there due to all the adversity um, of getting the season started, um, I can't complain. It was exciting games, and right now, as you can see, it's up in the air. There's not that dominant powerhouse that you would think coming into the CFL. So it could kind of go either way, but it was a good brand of football for the league, and it gave the viewers something to be excited for this next week coming up. From the viewers, I'm just going to sprinkle in some of their comments, Manny, as we go. Uh, Manny Arsenault with us today, by the way, from Prosper, Texas. Randolph Zora in Ontario says, Manny, I always knew you were a dangerous receiver, but my respect for you went through the roof after the Loeffler hit. So uh, people do remember (laughs) plays like that. But, you know, all those games, I couldn't believe how fluent the play Mm -hmm. was. The speed of the game. There was no pre-snap penalties for the most part, no drop balls, no missed tackles, didn't look like a lot of busted assignments. Can you tell the viewers how much yeah. work would have been put in to have that high quality ball, both NFL and CFL, given the layoff? Yeah, man, it's just being a pro, doing what's expected. And those guys have families to take care of. And in this business, film is your resume. So what you put on film is exactly who you are as an athlete. And you got guys guys fighting for jobs, people that was free agents that haven't played football in two years, not counting the ones that might have been injured last year that was on the CFL roster. So I think that hunger and and, and that itch to just be great and make a play is there because it's forcing guys to be locked in, being under the circumstances of we took a year off, we're going to have an expedited season, shorten it a little bit, and we got to play right now. So the margin for error is, is very small. So I think guys are that much more locked in because you don't have those preseason games and everything to be controlled and go at your own pace. So it's next man up mentality and guys playing for a job. And I think that's why the brand of football is how it is now being at those adverse situations, bringing out the best in those guys, whether it's a veteran or a rookie. You have to perform right now or it's going to be the next guy up. So I think um, by having it that way, it's giving us some good football and something to look forward to. But I think with how everything just happened, hey, report to camp. We about to play. The season here. (laughs) You got to be ready because it's too late to try to get ready now. Yeah, well, I got to ask you this. As a guy that's been through training camps in the NFL, CFL, Arena League, and whatever other league, would people are wondering if preseason games are overrated? If we did away with them, <laughs> would, would, would you go for that? <laughs> you got to have that one or two, man. That way they can give everybody a look for young guys coming in. That's their audition. That's for them to get those reps. So now that you're not just looking at your veteran guys getting ready for that week one. So that two preseason game, I think how the CFL does it is nice because you get to evaluate the younger talent. And for some guys, a rep is their only opportunity. And that's their chance to actually get out there. But most teams are predominantly majority built coming into the next season, and it's a few areas you want to tinkle with. So I think having that preseason is a good opportunity for young guys, and it's also an opportunity for guys that's coming off season into injuries where the GM and player personnel might have doubts if that guy will be ready to go. So having those two games, it, it's, I, I think, is very important um, just for the structure of the roster and also with training camp. But if they're going to remove that, you just can base everything off your um, – the squad where it'd be like green versus white or the orange and black game, that little game within the game where you bring the fans out there um, for fan fest and you base it off that. But having a preseason, I think, is very important um, just for the building of the roster um, moving forward in the future to see that younger talent. 
I respect your answer, Manny, because you would think with your years in the league, you would have said, yeah, get rid of them because you've already made the team. But the young guys are the, yeah, that's yeah. where they, that's where they make the team or break the team, as you know. So good for you because, because, well, you're a right. baller. That doesn't, that doesn't surprise me. Um, I got a couple last yeah. questions for you, Manny, before I let you go. What is up for yeah. you after 2021? What, what are you looking for next in your pro football career? Man, to be honest with you, man, anything football related for me have to happen this year. Um, playing the arena game, being in game shape. If some team mid stretch of the season was the call, need that veteran leadership, I wanted them to know that I'm ready to come in and play. So for 2021, this is this is me. Basically, the doors closing after this. So I'm open for any opportunities that's football related this year. But my biggest focus. Going into 22 is, man, being a better father, being a better husband, being a better sports performance coach, getting out in the community and giving the young kids the tools and resources needed to, to be successful, to be better than me, to have a longer playing career, but taking the game of football or whatever sport they is and preparing them for the game of life. So that's going to be my focus going into 2022. I was able to get, what, 12 years out of the game. Um, and, and it don't owe me anything. It set me up to be where I'm at now. So I'm, 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 I'm very content. You know, I'm, I'm happy with the career that I had, but, um, if I'm able to lace the cleats up the last time to come up to Canada, just in case an injury occur, I'm available. <laughs> Yo, Manny, I, I gotta, I, I can't let you go without talking about this in about 60 seconds. You are a fantastic motivational speaker Manny remember that one in uh, Weyburn I couldn't make it I had got called out because of a medical uh, situation you came in and pinch hit and you oh, yeah. you blew the doors off that place in Weyburn for, for all the farmers and ranchers that were there in the room can you just tell our viewers what you talk yeah. about when you're doing your motivational speaking yeah it's just about having a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset regardless of the career we in we all will face adversity at some point and the whole thing is kind of believing in yourself People around you can tell you how great you are, but that means nothing if you don't believe it. So it starts with you as the individual and, and just continue to do that. Everything is about confidence and whatever field we in, you got to take those reps in, you got to get better, but always continue to believe in yourself and have that don't quit winning mindset and mentality that I can get this done. And that's what the message is based off of, having a growth mindset and being able to respond to adversity when it comes. Well, I had to get that in there. Manny and I are both represented by EMJ Marketing. And uh, that's another thing that I know that you'll be doing here. Moving forth is uh, motivational yeah. speaking. Manny, appreciate the time. Continued success. And don't be, uh, don't be a stranger. Man, I won't be a stranger. And once these borders open, I'm looking to get into Canada, youth camp, speaking engagements, games of the week. I want to be there. So that's something we can kind of make happen to keep this connection going. You betcha. Can't wait to see you again. Thanks, Manny. Uh, thanks a lot. Manny Arsenal, number 84, joining us from Prosper, Texas, although that's not his Arena Football League number. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.